Hi, everyone. No growl. This is Basil Chapman sitting here for Tom O'Brien. I do the 10 o'clock to 11 o'clock um, uh, show on TFNN five days a week. And that's the, my service here is the opening call daily newsletter. And uh, we're looking at something very interesting here because within the context of markets, there are patterns that I look at all the time. Uh, one of the patterns that I look at is, let me just draw this in here because some of you are new to my work. I thought I had this already. There are three, basically there are three patterns that I love to look at. Um, first of all, I start off by trying to identify the lowest low bar and merely count each successively higher peak. And that's as simple as that. One penny above the previous peak alphabetically starts the next letter B and one penny above B starts C. You go all the way to a G, but at D, the fourth highest peak, other things can happen. You can have your sharpest decline. Look here in the Dow. Peak D in the top at, on the 5th of January at 36,952. And uh, you could also recycle and continue higher. So most importantly, that's the, the, the pattern that we try to identify. Once we've got the buy signal, a buy signal that's upgraded to a buy mode means that you should go to at least four higher peaks. That's kind of its obligation in the Chapman wave. I also look at three patterns straight up, straight down, straight line up, straight line down. Cup formation and arch formation with a combination where you can go down sharply, make a lowercase h, and you take that out, and that becomes a very big negative if it closes decisively below. And on the upside, if it closes above the green left side point, that is positive. So, with that in mind, let me show you what we're looking at. We're looking at the Dow getting to that peak D. We've been in a buy mode for subscribers to my opening call from the 15th, just under 33,000. We still have our long position way back from the lows of 20. Um, 2020. And what we're looking at is uh, the peak D failed to get to the 35,824 level. So that's going to be the big struggle. So that's for the Dow. There's a daily chart. There's the weekly chart. That's the monthly chart. Look at the S&P. The S&P was looking absolutely fantastic when we were going to the highs, uh, the, the, in, the intra week high last week all the way into Thursday and then kaboom got that smash to the downside over there but it's still a peak D it's holding very nicely it's up 32 at 45.77 the Dow was up about 100 the and the S&P monthly chart later in the show we'll talk about this monthly chart what we're anticipating for April I'm doing a webinar on that a week from Wednesday let's look at the QQQ and that's what I said to subscribers this morning these QQQs look like they have to play catch up they are desperately wanting to break to the upside and that's a peak b we should still get a leg c and then a peak c and then a leg d so the q's are up um, 6.89 at 368.74 they need to break one penny above 371.83 in the daily chart to start a leg c you got the iwm the russell 2000 doing okay but really lagging also made that peak d so the only one that didn't was it was the QQQ. Now we're looking at gold, and gold is uh, up, but not as up as sharp as it was. It's up at 11. It's had a spectacular move. Now this lowercase h is going to a lowercase m. If there is a break into the 1978, 1982 area, that arch will change into a cup that will be very favorable. I think we're going to stay in this consolidation a little longer. Crude oil, same thing. Huge move up, and now big move today, up four at 103.46, but I think that it's kind of stuck in this range for a little while. If it starts to trade back in the 114, 115 area, that's very good action for, for crude oil. The TLT failing. It's down again today, down a dollar at 131.32, and that means that yields are still up at the the upper range, and that's something very important. If we look at the IYT, which is the transportation index, huge move down from earlier last week. We hit the 276 level. We now underneath the foot, right on the 200 period moving average in the daily. But if you look at the weekly, weekly says, you know what? We just in this tr big, big trading range, U shaped once, U shaped twice triple top at the 287 level, 281, and then 280. So you can anticipate there's a lot of resistance, but we've got to keep an eye on both the transportation index because it does tell us quite a lot about the general market, and we've got to keep it in touch with the SMHs, which have pulled back very sharply, um, and they are failing to lead, and that's always something that makes me a little bit cautious. But I think the rotation is what we've got to focus on. The rotation says as long as there's rotational strength, as long as you see something like the, um, the, the growth stocks start to move higher 
off their being. Some of them were decimated. I mean, some of them like a, a square gets clobbered, comes down from 289 to 82. It deserves a break. It made a PD in this cup formation. Left side, right side price time match says it's got another few days in order to try to get to the left side high, which was the high of 100 and the last high of 152.70, and that was back on the 12th of January. Went from 152, got cut in half to 82, and now it's trying to come back. It's a very good comeback, but when you've been at 289 square, that's uh, called block ink, so that's really quite important. Uh, what we're also looking at, and I just need to check this so I can keep right on track with all the things that we do here at TFNN. Oh, I haven't had word there, so that's still good. Now, another thing that is really important, look at the VIX index, the volatility index. This vol why did I not type it in the right place? Volatility index. There we go. The dollar V I X dot X. That's how I get it. It's at 19.08. When it was making those tops, a double where we are right now, back at the 38 level on the 24th of January, slumps down to the 19s and then screams back up to 37.79. And that's when the Ukraine situation was getting really bad. And yet with rates, Russia, Ukraine, I mean, all these things going on, and yet... It couldn't break to a new high. Instead, it came down and has broken the rectangle lower base that was forming at about 20. And now we're at 1907. So all week, if we don't start rallying into the 2280 to 2350 area, but stay down under 20.20 20 in, in the 19s, perhaps even going lower, that's going to give buying pressure. So that as much as everything we look at says, this market, can, well, how can it go higher? There was such bad news out there. The market itself is rotating through different sectors. And my contention since the summer of 2010, uh, after we had gone long there, what was it, March the 6th of 2009, got long the Dow, those corrections were all rotational corrections. Periodically, we've had those big, big sell-offs. And even then, very quickly, you saw the rotational correction find some strength. I'll be back in a moment. I believe we should have uh, Steve Rhodes coming on. I hope so uh, for an interview. I'll be back in a moment. Basil Chapman sitting for Tom O'Brien. Dows of 90.